one interesting thing to note is an actual SCSI port on the back here. I have never seen a computer with this kind of connector, so this was very interesting to me. Also, I can tell that there is a huge difference in weight compared to the other computers I have taken apart in the past. Putting it on a scale, you can see that it weighs a hefty 41 pounds 14 ounces. Hopefully this weight indicates that there are a lot of great components in here, but regardless, I haven't dealt with a computer this heavy since the previous Dell server that I took apart many years ago. Anyway, as with the other Dell computers, we must ensure that the latch is disengaged, which needs a little force to slide out of the way. As you can see, I'm having a lot of trouble using my fingers, so I employ the use of some wire cutters to try to press it in place. So now that it is disengaged, we now press on the button in the front and the side panel pops right off. And now as you can see, it is not just a computer, but a workstation. And I can say in advance that we have some great parts in store for us. You can see a diagram of the computer's internals and I think that is really cool. You can also see some additional instructions with easy to read pictures inside. So we just pull on a green latch and put the power supply to the side. The next thing that I focus on is the removal of a metal bracket which held the power supply latch in place. Once that's out, I now focus on the removal of the cards. So we were able to retrieve a graphics card. As well as a modem card. Depressing on some green tabs, we take off an airflow shroud, revealing two slot processors. I take out the fan and depress on a connector, and then begin to take out some rather large screws. Four oversized screws are then taken out. And by pressing back on two tabs, our first Pentium 3 processor is taken out, followed by our second one. Now once those are free, I begin to disconnect all of our cables connecting our drives together. There are quite a few in this particular workstation. Eventually, I pull back on a metal panel, and now we have easy access to the rest of those cables. Many, many wires are disconnected here, including a rather colorful SCSI cable, which is a first for me. That cable is manufactured by 3M, so I do think it is a pretty good quality cable. Once all the wires are loose, I then try and take out the drives, but it's very difficult to do so at this time. So then I realize that the cover actually swings down, so I get to that in a little bit, but I now focus my attention on beginning to remove the power supply. So basically all I need to do is take out some screws, so I begin to do that. And I kind of stop for some reason midway through removing all those screws, and I switch my focus back to the front panel, which just happens to come right out. So here we have access to the drive, so we squeeze some tabs and remove our SCSI hard drive, a CD drive, and a DVD drive. In addition, there is a small green tab which I depress on to remove the floppy drive. Now the front panel is almost bare and the only thing I have yet to remove is a small LED and button board. By removing just one screw, followed with disconnecting some cabling from the motherboard. I then just kind of leave it there and put it to the side and I focus on that later. Placing the computer down, I now focus on the motherboard itself. Now it is quite large, it's about one and a half times as big as a standard motherboard, possibly even double the size, because it's quite long. I mean, it has to fit four IDE drives, two slot processors, and four memory stick slots, all in one row. 
so it's quite compact and it has to be quite big as a result. So basically I just take off the brackets that hold our slot CPU in place with a Phillips head screwdriver and continue to remove the rest of the screws holding the motherboard in place. Now it slides to the side and out, and once I disconnect the rest of the power supply connectors, it is finally freed. Now the only thing left to focus on this computer is the power supply and the front panel. That front panel board pretty much just gets unplugged, and once I unplug those, the wires kind of get routed back into the case. And turning it over here, I then focus on removing just the rest of those screws to finally make the power supply free. So yeah, basically the black plastic part is removed to better access the wiring and it actually reveals a small case fan. And once enough screws on the enclosure are taken out, I pry the case open and retrieve our rather unusually shaped power supply. After that we are finally done. So in this rather packed computer we get the following. Some unusual screws, a lot of wires and cabling of various types and styles, an LED button board with wire, a strangely shaped power supply, a floppy drive, as well as two types of optical drives, a CD and DVD drive. We also have something that I have never seen until now, which is a quantum SCSI drive, which we will go into my personal collection, because I think that board is very nice to look at, and I want to keep it around for a while. In addition, we have a giant motherboard, as well as a video and modem card, two fans, as well as two Pentium 3 slot processors. So. Aside from missing some memory, the computer's pretty much complete, and a very good one at that. So I hope you enjoyed all of the computers that I have torn apart in this series, but I am not done yet. So coming up next time, I will showcase the overall results of this horde and see just how much we ended up getting in the end. So I hope you enjoy that video coming very soon. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.